Hi guys, this is your host and those Suhail Mathur, best-selling author and co-founder of the Bookmakers Literary Agency and I welcome you to a brand new episode of Superstars with Suhail. And the superstar with us today over here is my very good friend, a top-shot corporate professional, a best-selling author across genres, right from thrillers to historicals and that's not all, a masterful painter as well, an artist for excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, you've guessed it right, it is none other than the very talented Mr. Anurag Anand. Anurag, how are you? Hi, Swahil. Good evening. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having me here and for the very, very humbling introduction. Thank you. Cheers. I'm, I'm absolutely looking forward to having a great time with you on uh, Superstars with Suhail where the questions will be sharp and the answers hopefully sharper. So, uh, Anurag, before we move ahead, I must tell you what our show is about. So, our show has 13 segments. And before we move into the first one, we only want you to do three things. Uh, number one, you have to be frank and honest. Number two, you need to be quick and fast. And number three, you don't need to be shocked with anything that comes your way. So with those three things firmly in place, let's start our first segment, which is called Pehli Pehli Baar Hai. So now, Anurag, our first segment, Pehli Pehli Baar Hai, chronicles five questions or five queries from the author's life about their first firsts, right? And so I'm going to ask you five questions and you have to give me quick responses, but also give a little background about the answer so that the viewers can understand both. So starting off, here is the first first for you, your first crush. Oh, that was way back, I think, last four or five years one of my teachers in school. As, as it happens with uh, most boys, uh, the, the first set of people outside the family who really impressed you and uh, sort of fascinated you are your teachers. And yes, I too was one of them who was fascinated. So with, what, uh, what, what subject did she teach? Uh, she was actually, she wasn't teaching in any section, unfortunately, but she was uh, um, an English teacher for uh, some of my other friends and I was supremely jealous of them. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So that's a very sweet memory. Uh, the second question, your first salary and how did you spend it? Oh, the first salary, uh, in fact, the first earning I, I would call it was uh, the money I made during my summer internship uh, as a part of my MBA. Okay. Uh, it was a paltry uh, amount if you look at it in the current point. Then it was like the first money you had literally made. Sure, sure. And uh, believe it or not, I did send the check back to my parents. Oh, wonderful, how sweet. So, what was it and in which year? Uh, this was in 2001. Okay. And for a few months, I, uh, I got 7,000 rupees as a stipend. Okay, nice. So, yeah, I mean, 7,000 in 2001 is a fairly good amount now, you know, for an internship or a stipend. So, well done. So, the next question for you is your first vehicle. First vehicle you purchased? Uh, it was a vehicle at maybe 145. Alright, and they, when did you, when did you buy it? This was uh, again, I think, late 90s, uh, when I was in college. Oh, nice. And uh, it was uh, one of those uh, modified bikes, you get the seat a little up and you move past on the roads. That, Interesting. Uh, I'm sure a lot of girls would be swooning after, swooning after seeing you, you know, on that bike. That I can just that's visualize not one it. Of the that's not one of the questions, one of the five questions, I should <laughs> Fair enough. And the final one from, uh, oh, sorry, the penultimate one is your first literary memory. Anything that you associate the world of books or literature with, the first memory. Yes, um, it was actually my work, my uh, short poem that I wrote, okay. that published in my school magazine. Oh, nice. and, and that was a different level of a high because uh, just doing something you written seeing it in print was a big 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 high for me and I, I actually slept for a lot of days thinking about it with a book on my side and oh, so sweet so which which class were you in when this came out this was i think class fifth class fifth oh, wonderful that's great so you know of course uh, you and i have done a lot of books together but the question over here is 
of first. So the question is, how did the idea of your first book with the bookmakers germinate, which is now called To Hell and Back? Please tell them what the initial title also was, and how did that idea germinate, the idea of the book? Yeah. Uh, let me let me uh, begin. Uh, the idea germinated, and hopefully, by then I'll be able to. Ready? Uh, so, uh, when we moved to Gurgaon, we would hear people talk, and we would ourselves experience uh, the duality that the city exists in. So there is the uber cosmo uh, yeah, yeah. part of Gurgaon where Sanya people come from all across the world, actually, yeah. and, and it's a very cosmo culture. And then there is the old traditional Gurgaon, which is essentially highways, uh, broadly separating the two parts. And uh, it's like two entirely different opposite parts of the world trying right. to coexist. Yeah. And there are multiple occasions where uh, these two worlds cross each other and a lot of interesting things happen then. Uh, so this story was basically conceptual. Look at the city uh, of, of Gurgaon and, and with this uh, sort of such interesting uh, intersections it provides. And what better way to like, uh, that story than to create a crime thriller around it? Something that really grips you with a lot of uh, incidents, uh, geography, uh, areas from the yeah. city peppered in which a lot of disparity. Uh, correct. So, so that's that's how uh, the the, the uh, story for the was conceptual. And honestly, as well, you'll have to jog my memory a little bit there because after the book came out with the current title, really have not mentally gone back to the earlier one. And no, but the current title is also <laughs> wonderful, which which gives vision to what you were saying to hell and back, which shows the two, uh, you know, variants. Uh, in fact, in fact, while you were giving this response, a movie that I could think of was NH10, uh, starring Anushka Sharma, which also depicts. That in a similar way, so it's it's set in you know the same milieu and how a person from the corporate life gets entangled into the rural one. So completely agree with you, and I think a lot of people will be able to resonate with the book. So, ladies and gentlemen, please go ahead and buy to Helen back if you already haven't. It's a bestseller, so there are chances that you have, but nonetheless, you can always do that. And just like that, we have very rapidly finished our first segment. So that brings us around. Yes, absolutely. That brings us to segment two, which is called the Rocking Rapid Fire. So I'll be asking you 10 questions and you have to give me quick responses to that. And here are your set of 10 questions. Anurag, the first one coming your way is a movie you saw on the sly from your parents. Salam Bombay. Salam Bombay. All right. An Indian female author or someone from the literary fraternity you find pretty? Oh, I'm, I'm sure they'll be looking at this. <laughs> so it's just, it's just a compliment. I mean, we're just saying pretty. So it's fine. Okay, it's no, you know, the others that I don't name are the ones So I'll, I'll take the blame on it. I've just asked him to name one. So, you know, there are many, but he just asked Rashima. to name one. Rashima. Rashima. All right, fair enough. She seems to be very popular with this circuit. All right. Uh, commercial success or critical acclaim? Uh, a bit of both, actually. Uh, but if you had to choose one, one, which one, which one would you favor? Uh, I would say commercial success. Commercial. And I know it's a slightly controversial answer, but uh, no, no, it's, it's perfectly thing. fine. It's perfectly fine. I mean, whatever you believe in, that's the right answer. Uh, book launches or literary festivals? All literary festivals. Literary festivals. Great. Who's hotter? A girl in a sari or a girl in a bikini? Oh, any day. So, so basically, girl in a sari any day and girl in a bikini any night. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> <I didn't laughs> okay. <say that. laughs> An Indian actor you would like to date? Oh, Radhika Rappi actually. Alright, Radhika. Just Radhika. Last evening, my wife and I were having a conversation where she said, doesn't like her and I was like, boss, <laughs> we have a difference in taste there. We have a difference in taste, alright. The new movie of hers is also released very recently, Mrs. Undercover on C5, so I think uh, you could definitely catch that. Um, naughty or nice, what do you prefer? 
Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Movies or web series? Uh, lately, web series. Lately, web series. All right. An Indian book you wish you had written? Plenty of time. Anyone? I think it's someone because that's, that's a book I believe which opened up uh, Indian English writing sure. in a big, big way. And, uh, All right. Yeah, I completely understand. Yeah. Completely understand. And the last one, mind, body or soul, the aspect that impresses you the most? Soul. Difficult to see, but soul. Wonderful. So, some really rapid, very honest answers. Loved it. Well done. And uh, the second segment's done. And we come to another fun segment, which is called Segment 3, Poocho To Jane. So now, Anurag, in Poocho To Jane, what has happened is that an author from the book Bakers has asked you a surprise question. So now, not only do you have to reply to that, at the end of it, I would be giving you options and you have to choose and guess who has asked you that question. So there is a three idiots connotation also to it. So if you're able to answer it in the first guess, you are like Rancho from Three Idiots, the topper of the class. If you answer in the second clue, you are like Farhan, who's a middling student. And if you answer in the third, then you are like Raju, clearly someone you wouldn't want to be in terms of academics. So the question Raju because with this family is such a big and fast expanding family that Yeah, but you'll have three options, so hopefully that'll help. So your question is this. The question for you is when on a date with your wife, what drink would you first order to impress her? Everyday Coke, the company you have a long association with, or a good wine? Uh, so first I need to answer the question. Right? Yeah, yeah. On the first date, actually, it would be uh, rum and coke. <laughs> rum and coke. Fair yeah. enough. So that's that's a good answer. In fact, in fact, you know, it also reminds me of this joke that I heard long back that there was this uh, couple who had gone on a date and you know they'd ordered a Coca Cola and <clears throat> by sheer luck a mosquito falls inside the glass of you know the coca-cola so the guy takes out the mosquito and is about to kill it but uh, he eventually doesn't because the mosquito says something to actually the girl because of which she says don't kill the mosquito what so the answer was that he tells the girl as you know it is the right answer. So you obviously expect all people, all employees of Coke to know that. That is wonderful. So now you have to guess who asked you this question. Your three options are Rashima Varma, Kulpreet Yadav, or Vadhan. One of these three has asked you this question. Who? Rashima Varma, Kulpreet Yadav, or Vadhan? I would go with Rashima. The Rashima. Is because of the, the, the drink option. Hmm. Uh, I'm just uh, that is actually that is actually reason. a very smart way to guess. And to be honest, I would have guessed it exactly like that. But the answer is incorrect. So you have. Well done. Congratulations, my friend. You are indeed Raju of the class because Kulpreet has asked you that question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so actually very very smart of him you know he's asked you a question which people may not really expect it's a very fun commercial question sir when with Kulpreet I would have thought he would put a whiskey or a rum as the drink of <laughs> true so so Kulpreet Yadav Mr. Kulpreet Yadav asked that but wonderful so good answer you gave in any case and a fun round so now we come to segment 4 which is called best and the worst So in best and the worst, I'll ask you a few of your favorite things and a few things that you absolutely detest. So here goes your favorite dish. Oh, butter chicken. Butter chicken, superb. The yuckiest dish you've ever had in life. Oh, I'm not a big food fan. So um, number of dishes in the 
Alright, okay. Uh, your favorite film? Surely. Surely. Okay. Uh, the worst movie you've ever seen? Oh, Maharaja. Maharaja. Okay. Uh, the Govinda one. The Govinda one. Yes. Yeah. Alright. Alright. Okay. Your favorite actor? Um. Rajkumar Rao. Okay, so the best film and the worst film of your favorite actor. That's a tough one. There uh, are three. Okay. And the worst one. Not the most. Have a word for me. No worst. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, your favorite song? Uh, these days, it's Takdeer from Gokstudio Bharat. Alright, nice, nice. And a hit or popular yeah, song? If you haven't. I will, I will. I have heard a few actually, but uh, I'll probably check what the title of the song is. Because some, a lot, some very interesting collaborations happening over there. So, uh, a hit or popular song that you don't like or didn't like? Hi, Buku, hi, Buku, hi, hi. <laughs> Alright, wonderful that, uh, there was a host of songs which I don't think you Why has somebody written this? Basically, basically that was Sunil Shetty calling out to his friend whose name was Huku and he said hi Huku, hi Huku, hi hi. You know, that was how the song originated. <laughs> Alright, uh, your least favorite actor? Um... Since you name to me, stick with him. But but there are lots of people who have made a name for themselves and acting who can't emote to feel they like it. So yeah, let's yeah. let's stick with Sunil Shetty. Alright, for, right. for now Sunil Shetty. Worst movie of your least favorite actor. Oh, there are plenty all those uh, again it's been a long time. Yeah. But uh, a lot, a lot of those drawn, those posters. I, I understand, yeah. Now from the poster and never got yourself down to watching the movie. You know. Alright. Uh, so the final one now. Best thing about your spouse? Uh, she's been tolerating me for quite a few years. And uh, <laughs> she somehow manages to handle all my antics. I think it's the vacations. <laughs> Okay, a thing you would want to improve in your spouse. Oh, you mean I seriously can't do this thing? No, but uh, uh, I think gauging by your earlier answer, maybe cookery skills. <laughs> cookery skills, bang on. Or taste in food, actually. <laughs> All right, favorite. Uh, that was that was a very very good round of our favorites and the least. Wonderfully well done. And that brings us to segment five, which is called Dimag Ka Dehi. So in segment five, Dimag Ka Dehi, what we're going to do is we're going to ask you a brain teaser. And uh, yeah, if I'm in the mood, I may just ask two, but. Let's start off with the first one. So here's the question for you, Anurag. Now, Eskimos are extremely skilled hunters, right? Yet they never kill penguins. Why? Eskimos are really skilled hunters, but yet they never kill or never hunt penguins. Why? Do they? Uh... Are they both present in different articles in that? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll give it to you. So one is found in the North Pole and the other in the South Pole. Yeah, right. So, so good, 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 good. Because getting them right is a big one. Uh, <laughs> correct. But uh, you said big one. So obviously, organically, I'll keep one more question for you. So uh, this one goes like Arnold Schwarzenegger has a long one. Michael J. Fox has a small one. Madonna doesn't have one. 
and the Pope doesn't need one. What? Surname. Surname, absolutely right, sir. <laughs> That is correct. That is correct. So two on two. Well done, Anurag. That was a good round. Well done. Clap. Start in order for you. Well done. And now we come to segment six, which is a lot of fun. It's called Never Have I Ever. So in Never Have I Ever, I'd be asking you ten questions. So what you need to do is you need to show us your ten fingers, and with everything that you have done, you. Put a finger down, right? Uh, you'll have to push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we can see the ten. Earlier we weren't able. Now we can see the ten. And if you haven't done something, you can let me know. So I'll move to the next one. So here we go. Never have I ever stolen in a shop. Okay. Beaten someone from the opposite gender. No, I haven't. Okay. Kissed someone from the same gender. I haven't. Made an excuse to not pay the restaurant bill. Done. Stalked the profile of an ex. Yes. Okay. Got drunk at a party. Oh. Can I get all fingers <laughs> down? <laughs> okay. Well done. Uh, had naughty thoughts about an office colleague. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's, okay. that's one hundred done. <laughs> uh, kissed in public. Yes. Okay. Use the pickup line to impress someone. Um. Yeah. Okay. So the last one lied about your actual location to someone. So that is seven on ten, which is good. Very good. Seventy percent. Some very interesting things you've done, uh, Anurag, and and I, and I and I think you were very candid about it as well. So well done. That was another great round. And we come to segment seven, which is one of my favorites. It is called "Main Hoon Kaun." So in segment seven, what I'd be doing is I'd be asking you about a particular personality, and you have to identify that personality. I'll be giving you three clues. So if you're able to answer in the first clue, or even in the second clue, I'll give you a lifeline for one of the Segments ahead. However, if you give a wrong answer, then there'll also be penalties on it. Okay. If you if you want to answer in the third, you can take wild guesses. So there are no penalties, but no bonuses too. But let's see how well you do on this. So here's the first clue on your personality. The father of a Bollywood star, the father-in-law of a Bollywood star, and the husband of a Bollywood star. My first job was as a radio jockey for Radio Ceylon, the oldest radio station in South Asia. The father of a Bollywood star, the father-in-law of a Bollywood star, and the husband of a Bollywood star. My first job was as a radio jockey for Radio Ceylon, the oldest radio station in South Asia. Would you no, like to answer? Would you like to pass? Yes, I'm just not sure if it was the same radio station, Amitabh Bachchan. Okay, that is unfortunately wrong. So you will get a penalty if if I'm in the mood uh, to give you a penalty. Let's see. But we'll continue. The second uh, clue is: I have the honor of playing brother to my real life Samdi and son to my wife in my first big hit, and father to my son in my last film. I have the honor of playing brother to my Samdi and. Son to my wife in my first big hit, and father to my son in my last film. Rishi Kapoor. No, that is also incorrect. The last, the last <laughs> clue is: I acted in a historical film, a still from which was digitally recreated 41 years later for a Shah Rukh Khan movie. Is uh, Raj. Raj Kapoor? No, it isn't. The I'm answer, the answer is Sunil Dutt. So, oh, Dutt. so Sunil Dutt is the answer. So, uh, father of a Bollywood star, Sanjay Dutt, father-in-law of a Bollywood star. That's tricky. That's Kumar Gaurav. 
Usually, lot of people would think Aishwarya Rai, but it's Kumar Gaurav, father-in-law of a Bollywood star, Kumar Gaurav. Husband is, of course, uh, wife was Nargis, and brother uh, to my Samdi and son to my wife in Mother India, and uh, father to my son in my last film, which was Munawai MBBS. The reason why I asked you this question was because of the third clue, because he acted in a historical film which was called Amrapali, and Amrapali is a book that he also wrote. So there was, there was of course a reason why I asked that. You know, of course he played Ajat Shatru in that uh, movie, and the still from that has been taken in the song Goom Tanana from Om Shanti Om, where Deepika is romancing all the old actors. You know, okay. so they've taken snippets from there. So that Maybe was. Do your research, from Suresh. <laughs> <laughs> Just try to make it interesting, nonetheless. But uh, we were talking about Amra Pali, and which brings us to segment eight, which is called Picture Abhi Baki Hai Mere Dost. So my first question to you is that if Amra Pali. So now your version predominantly talks about Amra Pali and. uh bimbi sar right so yeah. while whereas the movie had taken a romantic relationship between amrapali and his son uh Bim- bimbi sar's son ajat chatru so nonetheless we'll stick to your version and we'd like to ask that if you had to cast someone for the role of amrapali and bimbi sar who would you cast to so, uh amrapali would be priyanka chopra all right uh Bimbi sir, there are plenty of options. However, I would go with somebody like a uh, Ranveer Singh. Ranveer Singh. All right, Ranveer Singh, Priyanka Chopra, good star cast. Uh, but that's happening in your mind, not in our world. In our world, things move slightly differently. So what we've done is that we've created these two, uh, you know, chit platforms, mm-hmm. and uh, I would be swirling them one by one. One is for heroes, the other is for heroines. You have to tell me when to stop, and then I take out three chits from here. You tell me which chit you would want. One, two, three, and whatever is the name, that actor becomes the hero or the heroine. So we will start. This is for the heroes. So I'll start swirling. You let me know when you would want me to stop. Yep. Stop, please. Okay. So we'll pick up three now. That's one. Um. Okay. That is two, and uh, that is three. So one, two, three. Which number would you want? Because we are the best. Still pulling it out, but that's weird. You saw the name? Did you see? No, you can't see the name. There's too much light. Of course. Okay. So three. I'm also not seeing who it is. We'll see it later. Now we come to the ladies, and we re- uh, repeat the process. Yes. Okay. Stop now. So we'll take out three. That's one. That is two, and that is three. So one, two, three. Which one? Let's go with one here. Okay, so we have the names in. Let's take a look. Okay, interesting. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> very interesting indeed. So, so the thing is that uh, if it was to be turned into a movie, uh, the role of Amra Pali would be played by the very beautiful. You can't see her name because there's too much light on the screen. But yeah. by the very beautiful Purvashi Rao Tela. All right. Uh, At least she's beautiful, so she can fit the part. Yeah. And the role of uh, and the role of uh, Bimbi Sar would Bimbi. not be played by Rishabh Pant, but by someone <laughs> even more dynamic, handsome, and dashing than him, Kamal Rashid Khan, K R K. You don't don't want this movie to be. <laughs> <laughs> so K R K and Urvashi Rao Tela are the star cast yeah. for. The movie version of your book, very interesting. I'm sure it will be a big hit on the OTT at least. You have some very controversial people over there who will ensure that you know you get some good publicity. Okay, interesting. Which brings us to our ninth segment, which is what would you do? I ask you ten things. You have to quickly tell me what would you do if you woke up as Bobby Darling. I would go back to sleep. <laughs> All right. If Purvi Javed was your fashion designer, I would uh, give her some designing tips for her own clothes. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, 
if you became the PM for a day? Uh, in a day, there's a lot to be done. But, um, I would try and somehow do whatever I could to remove the uh, the polarity that's plaguing our society today. Fair enough. So, greater harmony, greater harmony, greater harmony is what that. you'd look at. If Arjun Kapoor approached you to act you in your biopic, to act as you in your biopic. Oh, if Arjun Kapoor really approached me, I would have gladly jumped for it. Okay, fair enough. If you had the power of invisibility. Ah, I would sneak into all sorts of places, some of which can't be named here, but yeah. Wow. <laughs> fair enough, if we all understand what those Kapoor. places would be. So, good answer, at least you're frank. If your cell phone fell into the toilet. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> I, w- I would look for a glove. You'd look for a glove, fair enough. Uh, if God came in front of you. Oh, I would probably faint. Okay. If you were swimming and someone stole your clothes. Um, that's fine. I'll probably have a towel on the side. If they could All right. If you found, if you found yourself, if you found yourself inside the big boss house. Oh, uh, I would probably get evicted real soon. Fair enough. But they keep yeah. the claws of. Correct. <laughs> and the last one: if someone changed your gender. I would find that person. <laughs> Actually. It might not be all that bad of thing. Pretty much, it's always. Yeah, that you're if, you just say that if somebody changed my gender, I would just call myself Anu. That's all. <laughs> and not Anurag. <laughs> no, I would think of a more creative. <laughs> Alright, so that's, that's another round done. So now we have a task at hand. We have 7 minutes 50 seconds left because Zoom has a time limit and we have 4 segments to go. So we'll try to do it as quickly as possible. Segment 10 is what next? So in what next Anurag, why don't you tell the readers what you are currently working on and what is it briefly about? Just an idea and by when can people expect it? So the next one uh, is a work of historical fiction again. Titan Jimson of Mahoba. Wonderful. Uh, it's a very interesting story. Uh, from a history that are now getting lost, so it's my humble attempt to keep them in the I think uh, I think it's a wonderful book and people will love it and it's going to release fairly soon so uh, hopefully in a couple yes. of months it should be out in the a couple market. of months guys yes. it's, it's a wonderful book truly uh, you know a great piece of history that people need to know about do look out for it and buy it in huge numbers like you've done for all his earlier books and now we come to segment 11 which is joke time So Anurag, in joke time, what you need to do is you need to either tell us a joke or you need to recount a very funny anecdote from your life. Knock knock. Who's there? Agarwal. Ah, okay. I know the answer to it. <laughs> okay, but 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 we'll continue. We'll continue for everyone who's hearing. Uh, Agarwal, con. Agarwal who? Acha, sorry. Agarwal who? Agarwal Girgil to hum sab man. But Giregi Kese, Ambuja cement said the money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, interesting. We come to a penultimate segment which is very funny too. It is segment 12, Zaban Samhalke. So now, Anurag, in Zaban Samhalke, we have six tongue twisters with us. Uh, in no particular order. Uh, you of course didn't win any lifelines but have penalties so let's see where we go with that. So usually the thing is that I'll ask you one uh, out of these and you have to say it five to ten times depending on my mood. But you have a penalty so if we have time I may just ask you two. Nonetheless for starters uh, just pick a number from one to six. Just choose one, two, three, four, five, six. Which one? So, 4 seems to be a very popular option over here. So, your tongue twister, which I feel is one of the most more difficult ones, is Tola Ram, Tala Tolke, 
तेल में तल गया तोलाराम ताला तोल के तेल में तल गया तल गया तुला राम ताला तोल के तेल में तल गया तुला राम ताला तोल के तेल में तल गया तुला राम ताला तोल के तेल में तल गया तुला राम ताला तोल के तेल में तल गया वेल डन वेल डन दैट इज ग्रेट यू डिड इट इन वन अटेम्प्ट वेरी गुड सो बट सिंस यू गॉट अ पेनल्टी आई हैव अ पेनल्टी क्वेश्चन बट आई विल बी फेयर विद यू सिंस यू हैव डन अ लॉट ऑफ हिस्टोरिकल बुक्स दिस इज अ हिस्टोरिकल वन कमिंग फॉर यू व्हिच इज अकबर रूलर अकबर रूलर लोअर 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 रूलर दिस वाज टफ ओके वेल डन वेल वेल डन यू यू आई मीन मैनेज बोथ ऑफ देम सो वेल डन और दैट वाज ग्रेट अगेन एंड वेरी फन सो दैट ब्रिंग्स अस टू आवर लास्ट सेगमेंट व्हिच इज टीबीबी शार्ट आउट So Anurag in TBB shout out we basically want you to tell us how your experience has been of working with the bookmakers and what do you make out of superstars with Suhail Oh let me begin with the second one first uh when I got the invite I had no clue what this was going to be and it's been super fun I'm sure it's going to I'm excited to watch the episode with my family Yeah it's it's a fantastic thing and uh Really waiting for the second season of it to be a part of it. Thanks, thanks so much for thinking. No, I mean that was the idea, you know, because usually have the run on mill questions. So try to do something interesting where you get to know about the person, you know, you so admire. And I'm um, I'm glad that happened. So thank you so much. And yes, a quick okay. word about your association with the bookmakers. Yeah, so to him, uh, incidentally, I happen to know one of the co-founders from even before bookmakers was born, which is you. Yeah. And so for me, it's never really been uh, the relationship, the formal relationship, like when you say that an agent and author. It's been more like a uh, like somebody who appeared at any point. Absolutely. Yeah. Coming with the suggestion. Uh, so so honestly, it's never been uh, a very professional, professional relationship yeah. for yeah. me. It's been more like working with a friend. To meet the same objective of coming out with a successful book, yeah, right. I'm glad that we've done that time and again, and look forward to continue doing that. And I also another word for the team, uh, the Nidhi, the entire team, everybody who works with you. Uh, one common thread that stitches everybody together is their passion for books, for the written word, and that's awesome. Thank you so much. Very kind words, and I do genuinely believe whatever he said because that is my association and equation with him. In fact, you know, there's one very interesting thing that I'd like to tell everyone that um, you know, if you if you do go to the Wikipedia page or if you did go to the Wikipedia page at one point of time, I haven't gone in a long time, but uh, you'll find notable, you know, the alumni from uh, DPS, and uh, that was a page where you found Anurag's name and my name, you know, on the same uh, platform. Because I have graduated from uh, Delhi Public School, Noida. I passed out from there, and you have from Mathura Road, right? <laughs> Mathura Road. That's also the school from where my dad passed out. So it was wonderful to see you over there, and thank you so much for being part of this very engaging, uh, you know, session. I think your answers really helped, uh, you know, uh, make this session all the more interesting. So thanks a lot, and thank I will. Thank you for giving me over to you. It was wonderful. It was. Thank you so much. Thank you, and we will definitely keep your request for uh, season two, and hopefully we we'll get a more interesting star cast for another of your books, <laughs> you know, next time around. So thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching this very interesting episode. I'll be back with another episode of Superstars with Suhail with another superstar. Till then, this is Suhail Mathur signing off with Anurag Anand. Take care. Cheers. Bye bye.